Hey everybody, Chodesh Tov. Chodesh Tov. Chodesh Tov. It's a new Hebrew month today. We're going to celebrate together. It's a time of renewal, a time of blessing, a time of good food, a time of music, a time of celebration. So we're going to celebrate together. I'm going to have 30 minutes. I'm going to try to cook whatever in my kitchen and for Shabbat. This is an example what you can do on Shabbat, what you can do for dinner at a couple of minutes of talking. <laughs> and yeah, we're gonna have some fun. So I don't know really what I'm gonna do. I have some ground turkey, so I think I'm gonna start with some meatballs. And Elan is now gonna sing a song and then talk about Rosh Hodish. And also we have some awesome with you guys, I mean from you guys about uh, Shabbat and everything. So we're gonna answer those crazy questions. So go ahead, Elan, and sing a song. By the way, I'm Leanne, this is Elan. I'm going to sing a song called Lord Get Me High, which is quite a lot to do with Rosh Chodesh. This new month is all about getting to a higher and higher place every Jewish month that goes by. Mm-hmm. Lord, get me high. You can sing along. Get me it's very high, easy. Get me high. Lord, get me high. Get me see it out of sky it's there but we don't see it it's the darkest sliver. time and it seems like the world is coming to an end imagine back in the day before we had electricity or for any of you maybe living off the grid you might or have lived off the grid you know what it's like when it's like completely dark out there and there's no light and it just looks like it's gonna be darkest but you know that as soon as the moon gets the smallest and it's the unseen in the sky is exactly the time that it's going to start growing again from a small sliver of smile in the sky to the full moon Nunes. again. Nunes, so that's, that's exciting. We're celebrating that's, uh, uh, renewal. Renewal, what we also and women like, uh, are really connected to the moon, right? We're right. really connected, so it's actually a women's holiday every month. A lot of Jewish people get together and they celebrate the women, get together, go out to lunch, go out on a boat. <laughs> cook with their husbands um, let me tell you what i start off with i think i'm gonna do um, um like swedish meatballs with the turkey i have so i have some onions going right here and then also i'm doing a quinoa with onion over there with some tomatoes and stuff so i'm starting on that and yeah so we have our first let me know who's here hey susan hey linda hey michigan Hey, Joshua and Penny. So happy you guys are here. Now, now, Penny has the first question and asks, why the heck do you have those beautiful side curls on your head? Do you mean these? <laughs> what are these doing? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> um, that's an excellent question, Penny. So uh, I didn't always have these. I only started growing them uh, separate from the rest of my hair uh, when I became Balchuva, meaning I became religious. Uh, the idea behind the peos, besides that it says specifically in the Torah that we shouldn't cut, cut off our sides of, our sides of the head. That's just men, right? I mean, women. It's just men. Okay, like Correct. so, women can um, shave their beards if they need. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, men seem to have more than the women the problem of connecting your mind to your heart, meaning we can t- tend to be either all brains, all feelings. And it's very important to connect the two. So the peril symbolically is supposed to make that connection between the mind and the heart. That's why uh, Jewish men grow them out. As uh, like we also bring down the shefa, the abundance, plenty, abundance from, the, from the mind, from all the thoughts, down to the heart and back up so that we're like a uh, neck, stiff neck. In Hebrew is Owe. It's the same letters as Pharaoh, Paro. It was like the idea of like uh, 
being stiff neck means that you cannot connect your head to your heart. Oh, You're stuck. Okay, yeah. So this is supposed to unstick us. Unstick us. That's yes. nice. Now, this is unsticking now is that a mitzvah for just Jewish people? It is just a mitzvah that mostly Hasidic Jewish uh, men will be will have. Okay. Uh, yeah. Great. Sorry, I am cooking. I want to explain what I'm doing. If you Go. can get one onion. Um, an onion. Okay. Oh, wait. I don't know if I need an onion, but we're going to see. Okay. So I'm making um, turkey um, Swedish meatballs. Okay. So there, I only have a little turkey today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add stuff to it. If I had a cooked potato, I would cook that and put it in there, but I don't. So I have potato flour, which is great. So I can add this. If I had more time, I would grate a lot of um, vegetables and put it in here, but I don't know where my grater is. <laughs> Hi, Susan and Linda. Uh, Susan is asking if you had a favorite fish recipe for Shabbat dinner. Yes, Ooh. I'm going to tell you what's her favorite fish recipe, even though she might not make it tonight. It, it is fish chowder. Because oh, yes. she so said that before she became religious, yeah. she loved crab chowder. No, no. Thank God we don't clam, eat that. Clam. Clam. Yeah, clam. Clam chowder. Clam chowder. I'm, from, I'm from San Francisco. It was a big thing. They put it in the sourdough bread. It's very good. Can you guys hear us? Is it like sizzling too much? I think we'll have to repeat Fine. Okay. So anyway, so uh, all for clam chowder when, when, once we started keeping kosher. But, uh, but she uh, makes a fantastic fish soup. That tastes just like clam chowder. Well, Unbelievable. You Someday you gotta. <laughs> I I uh, might even. You might now. From back in the day. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, let's do one more song and then continue no, wait, with the no, cooking. No, no, one second. Okay. She's sorry, got... I want to explain what I'm doing. Also, I'm just go for it. Okay, just one more second, guys. Sorry, a little stressful cooking under <laughs> under um, thirty minutes. Okay, I have two of my quinoa. I have one onion that's frying with like a tablespoon of olive oil. And then I have a container of, what's this called? Tomato paste. So we're gonna put that in there and it all together. Okay, let us know if you have any questions, anybody. And let us know if you can hear us and where you're listening to from today, where you're watching from today. Want to get a feeling of where you guys are. Okay. So mix it up. Thanks for really yummy. Sticky. I think it's in like Africa they make this. Where they, it's rice. They put a bunch of herbs, fry it up, and then with rice. So we're going to cook that a little bit. Okay. Let us, uh, let us know if, if you guys can hear us. <laughs> we don't know. Okay. Now we're going to ask another question about Shabbat. The question is, do you ever get stressed over uh, different ideas what to make for Shabbat? Okay. Do you? No. Is that a problem? No, it's not a problem. I'll tell you in just one second. You can sit over here. I just want to burn something. One second. Trying <laughs> to burn something. Give us a sign you're out there, guys. Last time there was some sound problems, so we want to make yeah. uh... Okay, so do I run out of ideas on Shabbat? No, because basically when I don't have time or don't know what to do, I just make the same thing over and over again, which is I put on the crock pot, I put in chicken, vegetables, and that's it. So I, I'm not like someone who needs something different every Shabbat. It's okay, <laughs> you know, because anything from a crock pot is like so good, right? I have some frozen meat oh, in the freezer for this time, and so I just cook meat in the freezer, chicken, whatever I have on hand last minute, and so I don't run out of ideas. Okay, so we're making this. Oh, great. Linda says sound is good. Okay, good. Baruch Hashem. Thank you, God. Susan says, I would love to see you make that recipe. I'm still in Tennessee. Oh, Okay. So uh, sometime we, we're gonna make a uh, you're gonna make that your fish chowder yeah at some point okay yeah. put it on your list put it on my list okay the question is for you Elam as you transition to be more of religious and observant what did you find most challenging about keeping Shabbat hmm. well that question could go to you too um, the most challenging thing for me in keeping Shabbat was the fact that. It made it much, much more difficult for me to see my uh, 
my family because uh, they don't observe the Shabbat the same way. We, we, we certainly had a Shabbat in our family. Uh, my mom used to light the Shabbat candles and my dad used to make a Kiddush. But for the rest, we didn't really keep like the, the laws. And um, it just, it just, that was the main thing. It was like, just like not being able to see friends and family as much. Um, we did have people over a few times for Shabbat, which has been really good. And yeah, I mean, uh, for the rest, it's, it's, uh, it's wonderful. It's just like fantastic out of this world. Um, yeah, okay, for me. Yeah, for you. Um, what was the question? If it's hard. What has been, what's been hardest in keeping the Shabbat? Um, uh, okay, for me, I did it very slowly. Like when I first learned about Shabbat, I was like, oh my God, this is great. But I still watch TV and I had my computer and my and my uh, phone, right? So what I first did on Shabbat was I watched only Jewish things on the computer. I watched Jewish movies, Torah, anything Jewish. That's what I did on Shabbat, okay? And then a month after that, I just turned off my computer and I only had my TV. No, wait, first was the TV. I turned it off, okay? So I had my computer. I only watched Jewish stuff. So after a month, I only had my phone. And I think back then I had like a dumb phone, okay? I had a dumb phone for a long time. It was the best. And so I had my dumb phone. <laughs> and I had it on, I guess, for my family. I was I felt weird that I was going to disconnect from my family. I talked to my family every day, my sisters and my mom back in the day. So I was like, oh, no. And then after a month or two, I turned off my phone. So it was slowly, slowly. Um, so... That was that hard to do? I don't know. I think the hardest thing is to like to like, oh, I want a light on and I can't do that. Like, oh no, I forgot to put a light on for my for my reading. <laughs> but but we usually have a list and we know what to do before Shabbat and we get that ready so we don't forget anything <laughs> like that. But anyway, let me tell you what I'm doing. I'm putting spices in here. I have soup mixes, all these different spices, paprika. Can't even see really. Shalom, Kota Camilla. Oh, Anita's us. here. Como estas? Oh, no, you're from, I'm sorry, England. I thought you are from Mexico for a second. <laughs> anyway, let me know what you guys' favorite meal is if you had, like, a Shabbat where you had a big, big meal going on. I love, um, what's your favorite, what's your favorite food, Elam? Salads. Oh, yeah, his salad. <laughs> on our first date, I yes. his favorite food. He said salad. I she thought he was a really psychopath. Dips are good too. Dips, dips, dips are probably in the fa salad family also. Yeah, dips. Okay, so listen. So if if you if you have any uh, experience with keeping the Shabbat or of having the Shabbat at other people and stuff, sure, sure. Yeah, I'd let love us to hear know what, what your it's favorite. Like been for you. Yeah. We okay. had a really. We, can well, I share let, this let, question? Let oh, me we'll first get there. Okay, okay. She's on the cooking. Okay. She's on so, the cooking. <laughs> so I have one onion I chopped up, and then I put some almond milk, about two cups. Now I'm going to put a little bit of flour. You can have gluten-free if you want to thicken up the sauce. This is going to be for, uh, what am I making? Um, <laughs> meatballs. Oh, Swedish meatballs. Okay. So a little bit of flour in there. That's enough. Okay. A little bit of seasoning, salt and pepper. Um, what else? Hold on a second. There we go. Also, again, I have this soup mix. It's amazing. It has so much spices in it. In America, you buy broth. Here, you can. It's like, um, it's a powder, so you can add water to it. It's so easy. So now we have the. Hold on. How do I push it here more? Uh, one second. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, so now that I have the sauce going, I'm going to make balls. Another question we got was, why is Shabbat, like, from Cheyenne, she asked this question, a bride? Why do we um, say that Shabbat is like a bride? Shabbat is compared to a bride. <laughs> do you know why? Hold on. You tell me. Um, wow. Never, I, um. I have to think. I, I, I can't think about it right now. I don't know. Tell me. Well, I, I, I heard this. I heard this. That um, all it, basically coming into Shabbat is sort of like joining is like going into a wedding. Also, before that's true. <laughs> a wedding, you're Party. supposed to not see your oh, future yeah. husband oh or gosh. wife for a week. Right. Is it a week or is it two weeks? A week. It's a week. Okay. Yeah, it's good over a little bit here. For the weak people, it's a week. For the strong people, it's two weeks. No, I don't know. <laughs> anyway. 
but you don't you don't see each other for a week and you're all in this like preparation right. Shabbat. And in the larger respect, and then you get excited this whole once it comes. world is a preparation yeah. for the greater Shabbat, which is the world to come. The day of day by of the way, within everything. this, and, and then it's sort of like we're get we're inviting in the kala, the bride, into the wedding day after all the week of preparation. Uh, by the way, Cheyenne also asked in that question an even bigger one, like uh is a, a how come is the Shabbat just the Jews? And I gotta say that I heard otherwise. Uh, Shabbat is originally just for Jews, but if you let me let me connect that to a you bride, connected, okay, you real fast. So, what do you do when you get married, right? The husband gives the wife or the wife to be a ring, a wedding ring. So, guess what Shabbat is? Shabbat is a wedding ring between God and the Jewish people to show them that there's a relationship there, and we show that there's a God in this world that created the world that stopped for one day. We we like to, what's this word? In a relationship, you need to have a goals together, right? So we emulate God by keeping Shabbat. So it's like our wedding ring. <laughs> we show the world that that we have a relationship with God, and it's so important to bring it into everybody, and to bring God into everyone else's life. So that's, and, and first of all, God asked all, all the nations if they want the Torah, and it was hard for them. They said they couldn't. So, so there was a group of people that said, sure, we'll do it. And that was the Jewish people. So actually, we're all supposed to do these amazing things to bring God into this world. But sometimes you need representatives to show everybody what to do. But so and and for the record, we get we get this question quite often. This sort of or like or, or people will say we now keep the Shabbat, and they're not necessarily uh, Jewish or raised Jewish. I'm so 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 basically, here here is what I heard: if you were a Gentile. And you decided to take upon yourself the seven Noachide laws. Look it up, the Noachide laws, and you do it in front of three rabbis who represent uh, a jury. Which ones of, of uh, you want to keep? But it's just that there's a prerequisite right. nowadays. If the decent people would be keeping, but it's sort of like let's just see that you're serious about that, right. and keep then the seven and go to heaven. Okay. Keep the seven. And the rest is commentary. Let's see what other people are saying. Glad here. you're here. We're so happy you're here. And who else? Kathy, Anita, Glenn. I'm so happy you made it to alive. We're thinking yeah. of you. We hope you're doing well. I'm cooking Swedish meatballs, okay? I'm cooking some quinoa back there. I'm trying to do everything under 30 minutes. We're going to see how we're going to do this, okay? Yes. <laughs> okay. I have 15 more minutes. We're halfway there. We're doing great. Okay. Now I'm going to read another question from you guys. Right over here. Uh, Glenn says, to this day, I still have issues without of habit reaching over to turn off a light. I started putting tape over the switch. Me so too, did Glenn. we. Me By too. the way, we just <laughs> did it before Shabbat. We, we put some tape on the switches. It wasn't us to do well. I mean, uh, the kids, children, so the children, like you know, we blame wanna... the kids. They they do everything wrong. We're perfect. We put it on for the kids. Yeah. Just kidding. We also <laughs> make mistakes. Yeah, it happens. Time. It happens. The yeah. main thing is like once you've accidentally switched it off, not to turn it back on. That's the the main. She yeah. asked, he asked, "Why are you not allowed to?" He was like, "Shizzy on Shabbat." We're talking about that right now. Well, you actually, know, you can use electricity on Shabbat once it's already on. You're not allowed to change the position of the electricity in a way that creates a direct action. So we have something called, uh, let's see if we can find one, it's called a Shabbat timer. Let me timer. introduce, for those of you who don't know it, gadget it's called, it's called a Shabbat timer. It was invented specifically for this purpose, it could be used also not for Shabbat. Basically, this thing has, besides the electricity outlet, a timer that has buttons that you can push in and before out. Before Shabbat, you uh, look at this. Before Shabbat, you'll prepare the hours you want the electricity to go on with a certain item, and you're allowed to. This is a little bit of a Shabbat prep. You're allowed to change even on Shabbat the situation where the buttons are. Uh, as in adding extra either on time, if it's on. If the That's machine is on, you add extra on. If it's off, you can add extra. That's basically. Very confusing, right? Means. Or whatever. But let's say it's up. Anyway. anyway, you can uh, check this out. I'm sure you can find in stores. Uh, yeah. 
and then yeah, we use yeah. electricity and Shabbat, right. just not we just we don't, don't touch it, put it on, it, or we don't for starters, right? Put it on, yeah, we we right. we make sure everything is prepped. You know, we say, oh look, there's my Shabbat prep cooking. No, we actually prep the whole house for Shabbat right. and get it ready. Now listen, I have cucumber, tomato, red onion, and kanamata olives. I'm gonna make a little Greek salad. Elam, could you tell me what they're saying over there? Yeah, Joshua and Penny smoking uh, are saying, yes, we are in our kites. We haven't been before a rabbi, though, but we are in total agreement with the Tanakh and the Jewish people. We are only Jewish-minded people in our town and surrounding towns. Amazing, Penny. You guys you are guys. unbelievable. Here, wow, yeah. You guys are, like, unbelievable. You don't need a, a bait in, like, a, what's it called? You don't need it to be a Noahide. Right. Meaning you need it if you want to keep more mitzvahs like Shabbat. Yeah. But seven is enough. <laughs> I think it well, is plenty. Yeah. It is Yo, awesome. I, I wish I wish you guys to have the opportunity at some point to be connected to more Noah guides and also to Jews in, in such a way that you can authenticate uh, uh, your process. It's amazing. It is and we're amazing. also saying, um, by the way, just for the record, with the Shabbat timer, I heard something very nice. So God created the world in six days, and on the seventh day, he rested. And from then on, he has the world on a Shabbat timer. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everything Auto. is nature automatic, yeah, right? Nature, nature, then yeah. the miracles that suddenly happen sometimes, well, sometimes you're allowed to break Shabbat for the sake of of, uh, of uh, life and death situation, we'll call it. So God will sometimes, in very rare cases, break his Shabbat. But generally, he's on the Shabbat timer, so to speak. And we... Uh, all, all of us doing his, our best. Uh, his, his, uh, <laughs> and you know, you know the term Shabbos goes. We are the ones who have or doing doing things to change to change the world. Hopefully, slowly joining him in his Shabbat. So well, once a week, we join God in that rest. Beautiful. That's nice. Uh, there you go. Okay, so okay, now here we go. I'm in doing cooking. cucumber tomato, and I got red onions going and cut them out all. So let's do that. Hey, Lon, let's sing a Shabbat song. What Shabbat song can we sing? Talking about Shabbat. Uh sure. It wasn't Kat, Kathy. Same. Are you saying you're asking us to say oh, in Hebrew good. a the prayer, prayer over the kindling of the light? You want, you want to hear what we say in Hebrew for when we candle the light? Sure. Elam will sing it on the guitar. All right, here we go. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, let's take a Shabbat song. Okay, Shabbat song. Let us know who lights Shabbat candles. You know, play a little bit of that background. Um, there was a question once asked, I don't know, something like this, like a story of someone not Jewish wrote, let's say, a future newspaper, okay, thousands of years in the future. They said, okay, aliens are here, we're allowed run by computers, 100%. And then on the it said, Shabbat candle lighting time. And they were like, what? And, and someone asked, do you, they weren't even Jewish, like, what are you even talking about? What are you writing that for? And the lady who, or the man who did this paper said, you know, people have been lighting Shabbat candles for thousands of years, so in the future, I I'd still be lighting the candles. So that's why I put it on this piece. I thought that was beautiful. So we're going to sing a Shabbat song. Thanks, Susan. Sing along at home, if you know it. Sing the song of Shabbos. 
So, Mindy, your question: Why do we light the candles when we're not supposed to use them? Oh, that's an amazing question. Oh yeah, why do we why use the oven? Oh, oh, why don't we? So let me let me talk about one. Thing. Okay, fine. First of all, why do we light the candles? The on question the is, why do people even light the candles on Shabbat? Right? Guess what? Back in the day, there was no electricity. Guess what they had? The candles. So God said, please light before Shabbat and let you have peace in the home between husband and wife. They can see each other. They can see your family and have a nice meal together. So you're going to light the candles. You're going to pray to me. You're going to say a blessing. It's going to, you know, start the spirituality of Shabbat. Candles are always going up to God, always going up. So that's how we should be. We should always be facing up like candles. So that's what we do on Shabbat. Another uh, uh, story about that is that uh, you know the story about the primordial sin in uh, in heaven. So the, woman, the Hava, Hava, yeah. no, uh, Adam and Eve, Hava Adam and, and Adam, Eve, <laughs> Hava and Adam. Uh, right. They ate from the forbidden fruit, and Hava had given the fruit to Adam after after the snake had I tempted her, okay. and that basically brought about <laughs> darkness to the world eating from the forbidden fruit. So Chava, who, uh, who was responsible in, in feeding the, the feeding them the fruit, basically, after the snake had convinced her that it was okay, uh, her job now as a, as a woman, and all, for, for all women afterwards, is to bring back light into the world. That so true? that's that's part of the candle. So, so light two, but if you only have one candle, that's also fine. Right now I have... Cucumber, tomato, cardamom, olives, red, red pepper. I mean, red onion, lemon, olive oil, salt, pepper. Now, there's two more things I want to do. I've got some carrots that I need to use. Any quick ideas? Carrots, uh, like for what? Okay, let salad. Me... Salad. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I get a shredder and I like shred carrots into like all my salad. Or um. Oh. I don't know. Like, oh, oh, oh! Tell them, Elam. Tell them about the kibbutz. Oh wait, Kate, Kathy says that okay. you can't see the stream anymore. Oh, no. Something happened. It was buffering. Now black screen. Love you. Maybe it comes back in soon. Is Miss... it back? Let us know. It's back. All right. All right. Mary B says she's learning Hebrew. Okay. Let me know if the thing's back again. We live in the middle of nowhere. It's not our camera. It's not the microphone. It's the internet. So sadly, for in and out, that's what's going on. I'm really, really sorry. <laughs> right, right. So let, let us know Sorry about if, that. If, you rest, if the rest of you are having some technical uh, trouble with it. We'll see what we can do. Okay, let me show you one more trick I do. Oh, amazing. Um, there was a just, just to wrap up the just to wrap up the the matter with uh, with like the candle lighting and Shabbat. It's true that we do not cook with the lights of a Shabbat, but we can use a blech, which is a hot special plate. hot plate. That we can that 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 basically is also lit from before Shabbat or lights itself automatically, and that is something that doesn't doesn't fully cook, but it keeps things warm. So and the lights, it's right. And the lights that we light on Shabbat specifically are just for the light and for the beauty and for bringing in back uh, light into the world. But now we have electricity. There's more light. Right. Thank God. Okay. Wait. Let me tell them one thing. Yeah. And then another song. No. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Oh, great. Okay, guys. Uh, less than five minutes, so let me do one thing. Okay. If I don't know what to do for a dip, I have dried onions. <laughs> don't touch a lady in the kitchen, Sorry. right? <laughs> he touched my bowl. Okay. It's worse so, than laying the lens about. <laughs> okay, so I got what's it called? Uh, dried onions, some za'atar, and olive oil. And salt. It's the best dip ever. It's so good. So if you have no time, there's no cooking involved on this dip. No mabucha. So you got to cook for an hour. You just like mix it with a knife because what I got right now. There we go. And then one more thing. So there goes the dip. Look at my mess, everybody. Is that fun? Oh. Here goes, there the, goes camera. the camera. Okay. Um, uh oh, what's going on? We're yellow. We're yellow. Wow. What's happening? One second. There we go. Okay. 
Let's say when I do, this is a trick for Shabbat. I make popsicles. They're so good. This is what I made. Um, hold on a second, Kayla. Oh, 30 minutes is up. Okay, I'm almost done. I just have a dessert to do. <laughs> okay, so I take, um, what's it called? Juice, like fresh juice, and I put it in into a pop thing, and I put some freeze-dried fruit in there. My mom brought this from Trader Joe's to me, you know, like freeze-dried strawberries, freeze-dried blueberries, whatever, and I put it with fresh juice, and the kids love it, and such a good dessert for Shabbat. So that is a quick, quick thing to try. So I welcome, think we're done. I'm done. Welcome, Under ben, 30 minutes. Yeah, and I think you get an extension time because you were talking so much. I know, but it's uh, okay, welcome, Frenchy <laughs> Taylor from Denmark. She hey, said she Denmark. missed it. She missed the beginning, but she loves the dessert. Okay, so let me tell you what I made, and we'll answer a couple of questions. So I made um, turkey Swedish meatballs, really yummy. Want to try them? Did you? We'll try them soon. I made some Greek salad. Everything is what I had on hand, okay? Again, we're all artists in this world. God is the ultimate artist creating everything, all the colors. And here we are with our palette. We're making what we can we have in our kitchens. And I made the pops. I mean, this is an example. I could have done, I could have made it again, but whatever. And then I got my quinoa, fried onions, tomato, and spices. Here, this is super yum. It'll be good with the, what it was called, meatballs. There we go. Amazing. So again, <laughs> you guys can do so much within 30 minutes. Let's scoot over a little bit. I'm going to be on the side. Here. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, 30 minutes you could do such with so little. This is only maybe like 15 ingredients. Um, I'm going to try the meatballs. You want to try it? I would like to say thank you. Uh, before everything, first of all, thank you so much for everybody who comes and watches and joins us yeah. on our lives. And thank you so much uh, for everybody who's commented and, and for all believers without the comments on the YouTube videos and on the chat live. <laughs> and it's, it's lovely to hear from you and, and your experiences and your questions and your sharings. Thank you so much. I yeah. also want to like finish maybe with uh, one song Wait, before we finish, but like one song go for yeah, Just one second. I want to say a couple of things. Oh, some of you guys donated some trees. You come over here. And I'm here in this. <laughs> some of you guys donated some trees. And guess what? We got the trees. We planted half of them. And we got this huge thing of soil right in front of our house. So it looks crazy. But anyway, so if any of you guys want to um, donate trees to Israel to beautify the land of Israel, which is a big myth, so you can always do that. I think the link is in the description. Um, also, I made some fun new things of a Jerusalem t-shirt and some Hebrew, um, what's it called, mugs with your name on it and also bags and stuff. Matsy shop. It's really, really cute. And um, what else? You never know who else? you'll meet that knows. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Someone here has a great story. I think I'm gonna tell it on a video. I'm first gonna ask if I can do that. <laughs> um, I'm gonna just do fast questions. And if you guys have any more questions. Um okay, one second. Someone asks, how do we teach our kids the Torah portion? If you want to answer that. Excellent books by Chabad uh, that we have that have pictures, pictures of the best. Um, yeah, pictures, and I, I also pictures act and out. songs, and uh, the, the, our kids go to a are actually going to a Chabad a kindergarten, and they have a lot of songs every week. They have like a short song about the about the weekly portion, which is really great. Yeah, and, we go over them on the, on the meal. Also on, right. on Shabbat, sometimes I have um, what's it called uh, teddy bears, and I act it out. With, right. I you know that Moshe Rabbeinu. I'm Moshe. I'm on a mountain right now, and. And uh, well, who's ever in the park shop is a new stuffed animal. So that's fun. You have to make it interactive. And um, sometimes so when I have no other way to catch anybody's attention, this is the trick. I take something and use it as if it's a phone and I answer hello. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, hello. Shabbat. Oh, Moshe Rabbeinu. <laughs> Moshe, yeah. how are you doing? Tell me. He tells oh, about wow. the park shop. So. Oh, no. You I'm hit Shabbat. the rock instead of talking to it? Oh, and then God said you can't go into the land. Oh, that's really, I'm so sorry. So we ended up having quite a nice conversation on the push. And the kids, the kids laugh like and they love it so much. Yeah. Gomping at, at the at the phone call in the middle of the Shabbat table. Yeah. But they get a lot of information on the push. I mean, we're trying to make Judaism and the Torah.
or like a lot of fun. So basically the, the quote is, how do you make someone eat ice cream? Well, you don't have to because it's so good, right? So we try to make our Torah, try to make our mitzvahs, our daily life, whatever we're doing, God, exciting. So it'll be like ice cream. So they'll want to have it, not, ew, this is gross and boring. You know, God forbid, please help us, God. Okay, Ilan, Maybe let's try. you should feel better with Rosh uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, with your back. You oh, I'm feel sorry. Yeah, please full relax. recovery. Full recovery soon in our days. Please, God, anyone who needs a full recovery will have a full recovery. God should heal us. God is the ultimate healer um, and should heal us really, really fast with God's help so we can get up and do things we want to do again. Okay, Lam, let's try this. And we'll the you know, let's try Yeah, this. yeah, we're just sorry. checking what other people are saying. There we go. No, just fine, fine. Okay. <laughs> I'm in. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. You guys should try the soup. Swedish you, can, meatballs. Can you send it to, to the chat box? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to email it. Who wants me to email them a meatball? <laughs> I'll do it right now. Um, also, one more thing. It would be very nice to meet you. Okay, um, now we're going to try honey lamb. One more Mindy thing. Mindy says that her Hebrew name is Omer. Wow, That's a great beautiful. Name. So you get, get an Omer t-shirt. So Lahayam, this is, let me show you guys. Orange, no, this is apple juice or orange juice, I forgot. With well, you haven't made it freeze dried <laughs> with freeze dried strawberries. I was making it right here, but now we're taking it. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, so good. Wow, very nice. My kids come home from So what does this have again? Okay, this, this is, is apple, apple juice? this is fresh apple juice. Yeah. And then at the end I put some freeze dried strawberries on top. Those, and that's it. <laughs> Every time my kids go home from school, I give them one. Yeah, they'll be asking otherwise for chocolate it's and summer, candy. And this right? is much better. This is like, this is fruit, so I'm very happy to Healthy, it. good snack. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't been able to read too much. Yes, Kathy, the pops are amazing. Oh, yeah, for sure. Linda, Mary B, I really hope your back feels better. Please, God. Um, what else? Yeah, yeah, 30 minutes. This is crazy. Listen, in life, I have no patience, okay? People might say that's a horrible thing, but guess what? <laughs> when it comes to cooking, it's not so bad, right? I have no patience, so I cook really fast. So that's what I did in 30 minutes. This also could have been done 30 minutes as in <laughs> to make them, okay? But, I mean, I could, but I was like... The PSS New Rebbe, a blessed memory, uh, says that um, that you should use any character trait that you have for the best. Amen. And even those <laughs> that sound the worst, like, some, like anger or impatience... Anger, oh or laziness, they all have some sort of tikkun, like a, some sort of way of fixing them to something good. Amen. In her Please case, God. let's just get it over with. <laughs> yeah, I have no patience. So it's like, let's get this meal over with, Shabbat, everything. Something takes forever. But anyway, we're going to do maybe one more song. Let us know how you guys are doing. I'm so appreciative of each and every one of you guys watching these crazy videos I make and then watching this now. We're so happy to have you guys here. You guys mean a lot to me. I think of you guys a lot. Pray for you guys. Hope you guys are doing well, and what what song do we have? Yeah, I just want to be Omra. That's the the female name for Omer. Uh, Omer is normally normally uh, used for for guys, but uh, Omra. I've heard I've, there's quite a few uh, ladies named Omra. Nice, nice. Yeah, just the thought. My name anyway. is Leah Rifka. Leah, by the way, does anyone know what it means? Leah means tired and cried. She cried a lot. Okay. So my name is Tired and Cried a Lot. You can play this like now. And uh, you can play Leah Rivka. What? And just play a little bit. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's it called? Oh, yeah. Leia, yeah. Does anybody know what your name means? Let me know. Rivka means it's the yoke that holds down cattle. Okay. So I'm like a, a heavy, um, tired, crying lady. Is that crazy? Thanks, Mom and Dad, for naming that. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> anyway. Hey, Mom. Hey, Mom. What's your, what's your name mean? I mean, Elam is sort of yeah related to world oh, something <laughs> disappearing, <soon. laughs> but it's Elam Yisrael now, so it's like a, it's Elam that's connected to the people of Israel. Um, can I sing a Let's sing a song. What's song? Yeah. This okay, means so with what? all the thankfulness, also we'll thank God for this amazing opportunity and for this amazing food and bountiness and for all you guys. A song called "It's Good to Thank God." Uh, we do it in Hebrew first and then English. Thank God, and to bless your name, sing 
into the peace of Shabbos, the connection of Shabbos, the light of Shabbos, that we can emulate the two candles that we light on Shabbat, or 20 candles, <laughs> and we can touch the sky and have energy to live our day and have purpose in this world and to connect to God, to touch high like are the flames on Shabbat. And uh, yeah, we're so thankful for each and every one of you guys. You guys are amazing. May God bless you. Amen. And we'll see you hopefully soon. See you guys soon. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Thank you, Glenn, and everybody for hanging out with us. We had so much fun. Hodesh Tov. Good job. Hodesh Tov. Adios, amigos. <laughs>